Hi everyone, today I've got here an Orc Boy. Uh, this is a 3D printed sculpt by Malicious Minis. He actually calls them mutant troops, I think. Uh, but I'm using them as Orc Boys with sluggers and choppers. So now this one came off of my Anycubic Photon Mono, and I painted him up using the Slap Chop method made popular by the Honest War Game. Or Honest War Gamer, <laughs> sorry. So he may not look that much, he may not win any painting competitions, but he was super quick to get out. And when you put him together with a couple of his mates, uh, they don't look half bad together. So I've printed out the mini that I wanted. It is modular, so I've glued it together in a way that I like. I wanted him as a slugger and chopper boy. And I've undercoated him with just a plain flat black. This is Rustoleum 2X flat black, but any black primer will do. I've then got a light grey. I'm using Administratum grey here. I've got an old makeup brush, and I'm going to dry brush this light grey all over the mini. I'm going to make sure that I do it quite lightly at first, just multiple passes, to pick out the detail while still leaving some of the black in the shadows and recesses. After that, I've got a mini that's mostly grey with some black in the recesses, and I've got some Army Painter matte white. Again, I'm going to now dry brush this and make sure I don't have, yeah, I don't have too much on my brush. So let's be quite selective. It'll just be on the very sharp edges and the very raised areas. With a couple of passes of this, what I'll then be left with is a mini who's mostly grey uh, for the contrast paints with some very bright white highlights and some nice dark recesses. With that prep work out of the way, now it is time to add some colour. So the rest of the steps involve adding on contrast paints to sort of tint these and shade it to the colours I want. I'm going to start off with the actual skin. That is the lowest layer, so it's easier to start with that. I've tried before with Orc Flesh Contrast, I've tried with Plague Blairer Flesh Contrast, my new favorite is actually a new paint. This is Gut Ripper Flesh, and this is sort of like in between. So Orc Flesh is very dark, Plague Bearer Flesh is a bit more yellowy green, but this Gut Ripper Flesh is exactly how I like my Orcs. If you're used to the normal Citadel paints, this is very similar to the Auric Flesh paint. Uh, it's that nice I want to say light, almost lime green. So this step now involves going over all of these pre-shaded areas with this contrast paint to tint them down. And it's very easy to see what I'm trying to do if you look at the skin over here on the hands. You'll see what this contrast paint does is it tints it to the color that I'm putting over it, but it still leaves those darker areas dark and the lighter areas light. Effectively, because of the undershading is already done, I'm now doing the base coats, the recess shading, and the highlighting in one quick and easy coat. With that now dried, you can see exactly what I mean with the highlights along the face is a perfect example of the kind of the kind of advantage you get from doing this underpainting technique. Next up, I'm going to move on to some of the clothing. I have here another new paint. This is Croxagore Scales. This is a nice uh, nice blue with a tad of green in it, and I think works very nicely for denim. And another great point that we get from this dry brushing is some of the flatter areas, like the pants, actually end up with a little bit of chalkiness due to that dry brushing, which is actually perfect for something like denim jeans. That Patchiness and that chalkiness lends itself quite well to the final finished effect. And of course the colour you pick for your orcs clothing is completely up to you. I'm just here to give you some 
from ideas. Uh, so that is that tracks course scales. For example, if you want a darker denim, this is a Killian green, or this is uh, Gazerax sewers for the brown. There's lots of different options that you can go for, and they all have the same result when you're done over that undercoat. Moving on now, I'm going to do his next layer of clothing, being his shirt. I have here some Agaros dunes, and because I want this to be a bit lighter, I'm using this nice sandy colour for his shirt. Just being very careful around the straps. The malicious mini designs have got lots of little straps holding all their ammo and grenades and things. For all of his various straps, I have here some snake bite leather. And the reason why I'm working partly from lower level up, as well as from lighter colors to darker, is that in places like this where I've gone over straps with the previous color, it's not too bad because the darker color will go over there quite nicely and hide any mistakes that I've made. Moving one color darker, I now have some Wildwood contrast, and with this I'm going to pick out all of the little pouches and doodads that he has all over him. <laughs> now that they're all so close together, some of those browns are starting to look quite similar there. <laughs> All right, moving on, I've got here some Black Templar, and what this is going to be for is both his boots, as well as, since I'm painting him for a goth or army, I'm going to paint his little, what do you call this, shoulder armor piece. I'm just going to make sure I don't go over too thick, because I do want that edge highlight to show up nicely there. We're nearly done. Then as my last contrast color, I've got some skeleton horde, and that is just to pick out his little orky toofs. Some of the face sculpts have got open mouths. In that case, I might use something like a red or maybe um, a dark flesh color for the inside of the mouth. But I find that skeleton horde with the teeth works very nicely. With that, all of the contrast paints are dried, and we've got a very nice effect for the highlights and shadows. However, one of the things that contrast paints can't do is the metallics, at least not very well. So what I have here is a nice light metal. I'm going to start off with some iron hand steel. The reason I'm choosing lighter instead of lead belcher is because I will be darkening it down. So for now, I'm just going to literally apply this all over all of the areas that I want to be metal. So that is both his chopper and his slugger, as well as his chains, his ammunition, basically any metallic parts on the model. I may need to just switch down to a smaller brush when I get to places such as the belt buckle and the ammo. I also have here some Balthazar Gold. And this is a nice brassy color that I'm going to use just to, let's say, break up some of the silver. So, for example, this shooter has got a lot of silver on it. So I'm going to go around and just pick out some of the panels in Balthazar Gold. Maybe also the magazine there. Similarly, on his chopper. Let's just pick out some of the parts just to break up that metal. That metal is done, and now there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to take some Mephiston Red. And with this, I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to pick out some spots just to break up the metal and add a splash of color onto the weapons. Seeing as this is a, a goth orc, sometimes people paint a little splash of red on 
with their orcs. So these little panels are perfect. Additionally, if I get a bit more paint there, his, his chopper has got a nice little wire hanging down, which is going to look great in that red. And while I've got this on my brush, I'm going to very carefully just pick out his eyes. And then with those base coats applied, I've got just some Nelm oil. This is the older one, if you're keeping track. And this is going to go over all of the metallics and reds that I just painted on. One, to darken them down a bit, which is why I use the lighter colors. And two, to provide a bit of definition, um, since we don't have that from the underpainting on the metallics. And with that, I've popped a quick base on him to show that at this point in time, I could stop here. I could call him done. Um, I've got a few of his mates here, and they all look equally as good. When you put them together, this is honestly a great little army. However, there are a few things I can do to take it to the next level if I wanted to. I've got here some Necron compound dry paint and a small little dry brush. I'm going to go ahead and just dry brush those metallics. I don't mind going over the red because that just makes the red look nice and chipped. I'm going to focus quite a bit along the sharp edge of the chopper to make it look a bit sharper as well as any areas that the light would hit. And then going back to my fist and red, I will just pick out those red bits once again, just to make them a bit more brighter after that wash. And now here's something I've never done before. I'm going to try and paint the checkered pattern on his shoulder pad. I have here some grey sear that I've watered down quite nicely on a fairly small brush. And if you see there, on this 3D print, you can actually see little ridges uh, at certain points. And I'm going to use those as guiding lines. So I might just need to angle him a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and paint a very thin line along each of those ridges. I will tidy this up. I know it looks incredibly messy that's a good line the rest of them not so much <laughs> and then a little bit more paint on my brush just judge what is a nice square from there I want to paint like an orc it seems I'll do that, there, maybe one more along there, and then a little bit more water, a little bit more paint on my brush, it's time to colour these in, let me pick that one, and that one, there, Hey, this doesn't look too bad so far. Let me go around and colour in this little checkerboard pattern. And then to tidy it up, I have here some Corvus Black, because the Black Templar wouldn't be a pitch black. I think Corvus Black might be a good match, just to go and tidy up anywhere that I think I went a little bit funny with those checker patterns. And with that, I'm calling this orc boy done. He has a lot of character, and honestly, it wasn't that difficult or didn't take that long to paint him. Got all those highlights, all those shadows, in a fraction of the time. If I compare him, I have here an orc commando, also by Malicious Minis Black Crag, that I painted on my channel many months ago, using like quote-unquote traditional method, he took me a lot longer 
than this slap chop technique. Uh, I'll post a link to the video somewhere over there if you want to see the difference in how I painted these. But honestly, different tools for different purposes. I'm going to need a lot of these boys on the field, so I don't want to spend too much time painting them. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. If you've got any questions, pop them down below in the comment box. Uh, feel free to give a like, a subscribe. Every time someone subscribes, YouTube sends me an email and it really does make my day. Anyway, have a great day and I'll see you again soon.